Hello everybody, it's Cindy the Scrapologist. Thanks for coming back to my channel again. If you're new here, please hit subscribe down below and click the little bell so you don't miss any of my videos. I have um, two project shares for you today. Um, I'm going to be making some cabinet cards. Cabinet cards, as you probably know, were done back in the day, back in the 1800s, and they were they were put onto a thick cardboard so that they could actually sit upright on people's cabinets. I guess they wouldn't put them in frames. They would just put them up like this. The cool thing is um, when, we, when we started tearing down walls in our house, we found about 40 cabinet cards of famous movie stars that were tacked up on our walls. And one, one of these days, I'd love to make a kit out of it. But um, this is going to be available in my shop soon. I'm not sure when this and the other thing I'm going to show you are going to be available because I'm um, involved in two shows right now that I'm music directing and they're both out of town and one of them opens in two weeks so things are starting to get a little crazy and I'm also rehearsing for the other one. So um, I'm not sure how much studio time I'm going to have over the next two weeks. So I wanted to jump in and do a video really quickly. I better shut my door. The dog is barking. Hold on. Sorry, probably the postman or something. She's a little yappy malty poo, so it's hard to shut her up sometimes. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to make a couple of cabinet cards. The thing that I loved about these particular cabinet cards is the back of them. I think that they're just so beautiful. Unfortunately, I was really mad at the person who had these because she stuck the price tag on them. And I tried so carefully. I used undo and I tried all kinds of things to um, to get get that price tag off without ruining the cards. But unfortunately, there's a li little blemish on both of them. I don't, why would somebody do that? I don't know. But anyway, it's just beautiful. These are both from the 1800s. This one is dated 1892. This one, does it have a date? Yeah, 1890. And then I'm calling her the school teacher. So pretty. And I'm calling him the dapper gentleman. Because I do. I think he looks very dapper. So I'm just going to recreate these very quickly. It's really simple to do. This is what the kit's going to look like when you get it. There will be a card on, um, on, on the front and back on one sheet for Dapper Gentleman and the front and back on another sheet for the school lady. They're already sized. They're exactly the same size as the original cabinet cards. So they are six and a quarter by four. So let me just cut this out. I have to do this off camera, sorry. We finally finished snow blowing and shoveling our 15 inches of snow yesterday, so everything is all cleared out. So, giving myself a little break today. Actually, my husband does most of it, poor thing. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to do to create to create the cabinet card feel to it is I'm not going to go with thick thick cardboard because I want to put this into a junk journal. So I'm using craft paper scraps just to give it some solidity. So let me cut. Um, well, what I like to do. <clears throat> Oops, I left some white paper on that. Let me recut it. There we go. Whoops. Didn't cut that very well. Okay. What I'd like to do is just adhere it to the backing and then cut after. Just going to use my tape runner. 
<laughs> Excuse me. Stick it on. I have a ton of this because I also make mini albums. So I don't throw away any of my scraps after I make an album. Okay, let me cut that. Look how dapper he is. I love it. And then put the back on. We can trim if we need to. Yeah, we'll have to trim just a teeny weeny bit there. I don't know when I'm going to be able to get this stuff that I'm going to show you today in my shop. So the best thing to do is to go over to my Etsy shop, which the link is going to be below, and favorite the shop. And then whenever I put something new in the shop, you'll get, a, you'll get an email notification from Etsy that there are new items in my shop, and that way you don't miss anything. Facebook, too, on my Facebook um, page, the Scrapologist, I always, whenever I post something into my Etsy shop, I announce it there on Facebook. So you could you could do that too. I would love to have you join my Facebook group. So I'm just going to do a little trimming to make this more precise so none of the craft is showing. And then I have my We Are Memory Keepers Crocodile. Sorry, it's um, sorry about the lighting. It's a dark day today. And I'm going to round the corners. Ink it up. Oops. Got, I've got glue on the dapper gentleman's face. <laughs> Don't want to do that. Look at the artwork on the back of that. I just love it. And look at that. In less than a couple minutes, you've got a beautiful cabinet card that you can put into your junk journal. I think... Oops! I'm dropping things, so... You know, how cool does that look? You could just set it in, and it just looks beautiful. Love it. So later on, I'm going to make another one with our little school teacher here. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show you that I'm going to be putting in my shop soon, I collect artwork from books from the 1800s. And um, I have this set that I think is just beautiful. And I'm going to go through each one and show them to you. I've, I've scanned them in, but I haven't had time to manipulate them into a kit. This will be going in my shop soon, and you'll get one of each of these. But the thing that I, I'm going to show you today is I really love the way they protected the artwork in the old books. It, um, this actually originally was glassine paper that they primarily used, and so I'm going to make one of these with the little protective sheet over it. But this one, I hope my camera's going to focus today. They all have a little teeny weeny... Um, come on, light. little teeny weeny... Um, title on the bottom in very faint script. So this one is called The Victim. And that's not a bad thing. It's just a little boy who feels he's been victimized probably by his, his little sister and mother's like, oh boy, you know, just being patient with them. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of artwork. Okay, so there's The Victim. Then this one is called 
the cottage door and you can see that these have some water damage and some patina to them which I love and that's going to come across in the kit and it says the cottage door on the bottom is that one this one is oops now they're upside down this is called my pet and she actually has a little hard to see in the camera there but she actually has a a crow or a raven or something on her finger and look at the cool age spots love it this one is called the gleaner Oop, that's just a random page she is called well, this one's called the letter. Look how elegant she is. And she has an old vintage envelope in her hand with a wax seal, which I've started making recently, and I have some in my shop, and I love those too. I should stick her in one of my envelopes. The elopement. So she's getting ready to elope with her lover. This one, this one is landscape style, not portrait, and it's called The Soldier's Farewell. This one is The Reprieve. She's begging for something there. I didn't read the book, so I don't know the story behind this. These are all from the same book. And this is my favorite. She's called Costanza. And look at the stain there as if somebody set some coffee down on it. Of course, we love that. So since she's my favorite, I did, um, I was starting to work on this kit. So I did scan her in, resize it, um, played with the saturation a little bit, and printed it on a little bit of a glossy paper because some of these... I guess this book isn't glossy, but sometimes these these photographs are glossy, and I kind of wanted that look. So I'm going to cut her out. Again, off camera, sorry. Okay, and now we're just going to recreate this tissue paper look. Now notice that the tissue paper is cut to, to about a half an inch border around the photograph. On most of these, the pa the, this paper doesn't go from end to end, so I'm going to cut the paper to size just to cover the photograph. Oh, you know what? This ended up, I didn't size this correctly. I'm going to have to, actually, I'm not done with the digital kit yet. I want it to be the same size as the book, which is four and three quarters by seven. And when I cut this, I cut this at four by six. Yeah. So these are going to be just a little bit bigger, probably. I don't know. I don't know. But, um... I forgot if I mentioned this already. Originally what they used was glassine paper because it had a little bit of a wax to it and it was resistant to water and all sorts of things. So, and, and um, where did I put it? Tim Holtz does have a glassine paper out, but it's not opaque. It's, it's well, it is a little, but, um, and it's kind of waxed and you could put that over it if you if you want it see it's a little bit opaque opaque and kind of mimics this but it's a little darker than what I'm going for but you can use that it's Tim Holtz glassine paper it's a little bit expensive um, I pulled out a sheet of vellum 
that might be an option, but for me, this is thicker than what I wanted. So what I'm going to be using is just plain old tracing paper. I got this pad at Walmart. It's, um, it's a little more of the thickness that I wanted. You could, oh, the other thing is you could also use um, tissue paper. Hey, camera, what happened? There we go. You can also use tissue paper, but again, that was um, not the consistency, the thickness that I was going for. The tissue paper is probably the closest to this glassine paper, but I just wanted to use the tracing paper. I wanted it to, be, it to be a little more durable because I might decorate it. So those are some options for you. You decide what works best for you. And I'm just going to go, oops, this ruler, I'm, all my um, markings are fading away. Sometimes I have a hard time with this ruler. Um, five by five by four. So that's a nice size. And I am, you're going to be disgusted by my mat. <laughs> Look at this thing. Ah! I need a new one. I keep saying that, I know. I am going to ink this up just a little bit. Whoops, age it just a little. So it doesn't look so pretty and new. This is my Tim Holtz vintage photo. If you watch me, you already know that. I pra that's practically all I ever use. Okay. And then how they did this back in the old days was just have a little bead of glue. So I'm going to do the same thing. You could use um, score tape if you want a double-sided tape, but I really want to use the glue for this. So I'm going to put a little, little thin bead of glue. Just a clear drying glue. There. And there we have it. Here's the one from the kit. And here's our original. She's a little bigger. Here's our original. Isn't that fun? I just love the way they used to do that. So I wanted to recreate it and show you how to do that. So there we've got a covered photo and we have a cabinet card. So I hope you make some of these. You can go out and you don't have to buy my kit necessarily. You can go out and get some vintage photos of your own or some cabinet cards off the off of the internet and make these all day long. So I hope you enjoyed it and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!